In the past year, social media has been about cutting down, spending less time on the platforms, being more mindful about what you post and putting less information out there for everyone to see. Under lockdown, however, things have changed quite dramatically. As millions of teenagers are confined to their homes, inquiries show that their social media use is through the roof. Since it's relatively new technology, not much is known about the long-term effects of scrolling through endless posts. If you believe your grandparents, however, spending too much time on your phone is the main reason the world is going to shit, my dudes. So that begs the question, what is the impact of excessive social media use? What's up my dudes, your boy Gilbro here. Which social media platform do you use the most? Let me know in the comments down below. Also consider leaving a like and subscribe if you like the content. Big shout out to today's sponsor. Just kidding, I don't have a sponsor, so, so yeah, uh, I'm with the content, I guess. Let's take a step back and look at some of the most popular social media platforms out there. First on our list, Facebook. It might surprise you that this is still the platform with the most users as of the making of this video. After all, isn't it mainly used by Karens to rant about how vaccines cause autism? and racist old people? Well, yes it is, actually. While just under half of seniors use the app, the demographic has more than doubled since 2012. Just like your dreams, Facebook coolness is fading away faster than ever before and teenagers are flocking to other apps. Like the one second on our list, YouTube. 85% of 13 to 17 year olds use the video sharing platform. Popular among these demographics are content creators like PewDiePie, Nigga Higge and Zoella. I am no longer a teenager, but I still use YouTube on a daily basis. To be honest, my average watch time is quite embarrassing. Not as embarrassing as Karen's Facebook post, but still, it's like really bad. Numero tres on our list, Instagram. Facebook acquired Instagram for $1 billion in 2012. I don't use the app myself, so I looked up what it is like the fucking boomer I am. And according to Livewire, this trendy thing called Instagram that all the cool kids seem to be into is basically a simplified version of Facebook with a bigger emphasis on photographs. You know you've got a banger on your hands if you simplify the app with the most retarded user base. Instagram, however, is one of the fastest growing social media platforms and it is projected to overtake Facebook somewhere in the future. Number 4 on our list, TikTok. Of all the apps listed, TikTok has the youngest demographic. Again, I don't use the app myself, but according to Webwise, TikTok is a social media platform for young people to express themselves through singing, dancing, comedy and lip syncing. Kinda like those shitty dubbed Mexican soap operas. Last on our list, Snapchat. Indeed. Although there are many examples, I feel like the five on our list are a decent representation of what's out there. Like, almost everybody uses at least one of these social media apps, so they can't be all bad, right? Virtual communities can help teens feel supported and connected. According to a survey from 2020, there was an obvious correlation between the kids who did better emotionally and the ones that were finding ways to connect virtually with their friends. Social media is an outlet for creativity. The public's response becomes a guide for them to better shape their skills and enables them to express themselves freely. Teenagers can use social media to spread awareness and kindness. These tools allow young people to look for new ideas and connections. Social media can be a great platform for them to start campaigning for their rights and the rights of others. This being said though, being too connected online can be bad for your health as well. Even if you know that the images you're viewing on social media are manipulated, they can still make you feel insecure about your own life. We are well aware that our peers tend to share just the highlights and rarely the low points everyone experiences. But that doesn't mean you feel less envious when you're scrolling through your friend's photoshop bikini picture or reading about their new promotion at work. Yet you keep returning to social media over and over again. Fear of missing out will lead you to believe that you'll be left out of the conversation at school or work, your relationships will suffer or you'll miss out on an invitation. This will lead to feelings of anxiety and depression. One study found that Facebook use was linked to both less happiness and less life satisfaction. The more people use the app in a day, the more the other two variables dropped off. Despite this, people still flock to social media. How come people don't just stop using them if it makes them depressed and anxious? Depression and anxiousness lead to isolation. Isolation makes you want to seek out people. People seek connection with peers through social media. 
This leads to more depression, anxiety and isolation. And so, the cycle continues. This behavior can be incredibly addictive. Social media addicts will display similar behavior to other substance abusers. Mood modification, salience, tolerance, withdrawal symptoms, conflict and relapse are all symptoms of addictive social media use. And just like other addicts, incredible amounts of time are wasted getting their fix. In 2020, the average user spent 145 minutes per day on social media. As 60% of teens report having experienced some sort of cyberbullying, it's not hard to imagine spending this much time on social media has a big impact on mental health. When I started doing research for this video, my mind on social media was already made up. I felt like these apps were nothing but a waste of time. However, just as is the case with other technologies, social media should be considered a tool. This tool can be used in many different ways and for many different things. Yes, social media can have a negative impact on people's life, but it can have a positive one as well. Some people fall down the rabbit hole of addiction, while others from the community of like-minded individuals. If anything, social media enables you to voice your opinion. This however is overshadowed by the industry's treatment of their platforms. As the focus shifted from expression to sales, from community to fake beauty standards and from kindness to harshness, it becomes increasingly hard to justify blaming individuals for being vain. But this is a whole other topic and might form the basis for a new video. Is this something you guys would like to see? Did you like the content of the video? Let me know in the comments below. If you want to check out my previous video, you can click on the one in the top left. If you want to check other ones, click on the one in the bottom left. As always, if you have any suggestions on topics you want to see a video on, let me know. Thanks for watching the video and see you my dudes.